Hi all, it's uh, it's Rich again. So I got uh, so as everybody knows, I've had some issues with this uh, with my loader, you know, running and everything like that. So I got that all fixed. It was uh, I had a leaking injector, and then I also had um, then after that, while I was trying to bleed the thing, I tripped this, and I didn't realize it, and that shuts off the air. I think I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I think it's for. Um, it's a runaway emergency stop if that makes sense. It just cuts off the air. There's a flapper in there. That's spring-loaded um, Actually, if, if anybody knows what it's called, please leave in the comments because I'm uh, I've, I've ne I, I just barely noticed it uh, a few weeks ago, so uh, That was part of the problem. I did have a leaking injector uh, And then I had a had a hell of a time bleeding the fuel on this thing so uh, that was another issue. Um, so yeah, so what I've been doing lately is, uh, so when I got this thing, all the electronics were stripped out of it. Um, all the wires were cut and everything like that. So, um, matter of fact, there was even signs of a fire in the instrument pa panel. Um, all the wires charred and everything like that. None of the gauges ever worked. So, uh, I ended up going through and pulling all new wire through, which was, uh, not easy to do by myself, but I ended up doing it. Um, so I think I have everything hooked up correctly. Um, the manuals I have uh, are not that great, not that easy to read. I think I found them online. Mini par sounds familiar. So uh, I ended up using that as a basis. Um, it's not my exact machine. I noticed that. I got. I had some, there was some extra wires that I didn't need. So I just pulled them out, but so I I pulled wire all the way the length. Um, I got everything, all the electronics that work. I think I have hooked up. There's a couple of air valves underneath that I don't know what they're for. They were never hooked. They were not hooked up before. But we'll uh, see. So this is the instrument panel. I got everything uh, hooked up. It's a little bit of a wire mess in there, but. Um, I put in the new ignition switch, my starter button's right here, I think I have, uh, so I think that's, I think everything's hooked up correctly, I did some dry checks, some uh, continuity checks, I did verify that my lights work, my headlights work, and my high beams work, um, my aftermarket uh, temperature gauge, water temperature gauge works, I don't know if the ammeter works, I haven't tried it, we're going to start it up today, see if it works. Uh, the air pressure gauge works. The oil pressure gauge, I don't know if it works. I've never seen it move. So, uh, and I really didn't do anything with that. I did blow out the tube. I think it was plugged. But, uh, it's, it's, I, I don't know exactly how it works, but it just, it's not electronic. Uh, it's just this tube that goes all the way out to the back of the machine, to the engine, so, um, and then, uh, today we'll also see maybe that if we, I probably won't run it long enough to see if the, te uh, the um, converter temperature gauge works. But, um, yeah, so that was, <laughs> took me five days to do this by myself. Then I put that, I, I hooked this switch up to the horn, so I've got a uh, horn that works. So that's everything in the cab. I'm going to put that back together before I start it up. Uh, let's see. What else did I get? Uh, then there's some... Yeah, so the things I didn't hook up... There is... There is an air valve in here. I don't know if you can see it. There's a couple of wires. I have no clue what that's for. I think it's for the brakes. It was hooked up in parallel with the brake lights. And the brake light switch. So that's only powered when you have the brakes on. And on this thing, the brakes don't work. Uh... Or I've never had them work. Um, and then, uh... I have this solenoid here that I have no clue what it's for. It's just just the wires are all cut off and everything like that. So I'm probably not going to hook that up. I have no clue what to hook it up to. Maybe I'll maybe I'll find something in the manuals. And then there was this one. There this thing had a coil on it. And that's something for it's something with the hydraulic system because it comes back to the hydraulic system. And uh it doesn't leak. So I don't think I really need to worry about it. It comes to right here. 
So that, I'm just going to leave it disconnected. Um, yeah, so I think I have all the electronics that I have currently on this machine working. But we'll find it out. We'll find out. The alternator, um, I'm not sure if it works. I think that's the new alternator I put on. I did buy a Delco Remy alternator, and I think I put it on this machine. But I don't remember exactly. It looks new. <clears throat> so we'll see if I can, uh, if the charging system will work. This machine's nice. It just, the, just to use the thing is, I mean, it's fully hydraulic. You don't need any electricity except for lights and charging the battery. So that's it. So today I'm going to, I'm going to get set up. I'm going to put the, uh, instrument panel back together, uh, get the tripod set up and see if this thing starts from the cab with the starter button. So this is the original wiring that, that was on the loader. Um, it's in pretty rough shape. A lot of things were cut um, and burnt too. So everything in the uh, everything that was in in the cab was burnt because everything was shorted out, corroded, and really was in rough shape. So I didn't have the power hooked up at all. All I had was just uh, enough to start the machine, and none of the lights worked, none of the gauges worked. So. Yeah, it was time to replace some of the wiring. Everything was spliced together. It looked like crap. So, but yeah, that's so that's where I that's where it came from at least. Um, a lot of uh, shoddy workmanship too, just to get stuff working. It looked like a lot of the wires were cut, most likely because something was shorted out. So they just ended up, you know, cutting the wires just so. Uh, Smoke would stop billowing out of the cab. But yeah, that was my. Uh, that was my. Uh, took me about five days to replace the wiring. I had to wring everything out because I didn't. I don't have very good uh, documentation on this machine. Uh, it has a lot of. Uh, the manuals are not very good, so all I have is uh, basically color coding. They tell me what, you know, what, 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 what color wire is for what. Um, and yeah, it's just, <laughs> it wasn't a very good, it wasn't a very good uh, manual, but I think I made sense of everything. So it's not wired exactly the way it was originally, but it will, uh, it'll work for what I need it for. Okay. So I have, uh, I have everything set up. Um, I wanted to check the, the, um, See if the alternator is working so we're at 12.2 volts right now it's a little low but i think it'll be enough to start the machine um so yeah i got uh, i i'm leaving my my uh my bleeder switch in which is just a switch i put in for um bleeding the machine so i can bleed it by myself um but and it's just hooked up to the solenoid it's just a maintained switch so uh, we're gonna we're about to find out. Um, I got a 25 amp fuse in for the for the battery just in case uh, something goes wrong. Uh, and then uh, yeah, let's go ahead and try it. Make sure the fuel's on. And then uh, the next project to do is to get the uh, get the so I can shut it off from the cab. So let's go ahead and see if it'll start. Okay, so 
so that battery's gonna be keep charging before I start it up. I will, uh, yeah, so we'll be back here tomorrow and I will, uh, I'll attempt to start it again tomorrow. But the good news is the thing turns over, so that means, uh, I had already checked the uh, neutral start switch, which is right here. I wired that in. Um, so we verified that works, which I kind of already did my continuity check. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, tomorrow I, I'll charge up the battery and uh, we'll, uh, we'll be back here tomorrow to get this thing started. Hopefully the uh, hour meter works because I don't think the 203, 231 hours is accurate. This machine's old. It's probably on its second engine. Okay, so it's the next morning. Uh, we're gonna try to get this thing started today via the switch in the cab. Um, I got the battery all charged up. It's reading 12.71. And uh, so what we'll do is we'll start it up and we'll see if the gauges are working and see if, uh, I, um, I know one of the gauges is working. That's my uh, my aftermarket one. We'll see how this goes. Hopefully it works. I'll, I'll bring you up in the cab and show you the, the gauges, provided this thing will start. Okay, so it seems like the uh, the alternator is not charging the battery, but that might not be that hard to fix. I'm not sure that box, it's a field, field box. Uh, I'm not sure if that's any good. I think all that's in there is a diode, which may have easily popped. Um, another thing I might need to do is I might need to put in an exciter switch for the alternator. Uh, I'm thinking about doing that on the forklift. Just because the batteries are never going to be f always, you know, if I let the thing sit for any length of time, the battery is going to um, drain down a little bit and it won't be enough to uh, power the field on startup through the ignition switch, that is. So, um, we'll see. I don't know if something popped when I started the thing up. Oh, yeah. So that fuse popped. Um, I'm going to have to uh, put in a bigger fuse because that's only a 25 amp. I think I... S decided I needed a minimum of 30 amp so I'll, I'll go ahead and replace that um, and I think maybe a fuse popped in the in the cab I'm gonna check but the thing is the wiring's good I just got to select proper size fuses and um, I'm not sure if the ammeter was working or not because the alternator was not outputting but I did notice one thing that my oil pressure light was work my oil pressure gauge was working so I was able to fix that by blowing out the tube. I just took some compressed air and blew it out. But um, And of course I didn't run it up to temperature so I don't know if the converter temperature was working or not. But that's something for a later date. Everything's hooked up at least. Um, yeah, so that's it for right now. I'm gonna, I'll, I might do another follow-up video if I get, once I have some work for this thing. Okay, that's it for now. Like, share, subscribe if you're if you want to see more of these, I'm going to try to start posting a little bit more regularly. And uh, I'm going to try to edit my videos a little bit better. I'm not very good at it. So, well, stay tuned for more.